Welcome to our third online birthing information class. My name is Abby and I'm a midwife working as part of the Mid and South Essex NHS Foundation Trust. During this session, myself and my colleague are going to talk to you about the postnatal period and infant feeding. Immediately after the birth of your baby and your placenta, your midwife will check your perineum for any trauma or tears. If you need to have stitches, they will get this done for you whilst you're enjoying skin to skin with your baby. Following the birth of your baby and placenta, you can expect to lose some blood. We do recommend you bring in maternity pads as they're thicker, as your blood loss will be a little bit heavier to begin with. Over the next few weeks, your blood loss will fade, a bit like a period. We will assist you with your feeding of choice and we do recommend skin to skin as much as possible. We will offer you some tea and toast and make you feel refreshed. Vitamin K is a substance that is naturally found in the body. It plays an essential role to the normal process of blood clotting. Newborn babies have low levels of vitamin K in their blood and occasionally can start to bleed. It is given either by a single injection or orally on day birth, day seven and day 28. Please check out the link below for more details. Hi, my name is Lizette and I'm going to talk to you today about infant feeding. We are a baby friendly hospital and we encourage all our women to try breastfeeding. Breastfeeding isn't something that comes easily to everybody, but with our support we will help you and we will support you in any choice that you make. After your baby is born, you will be given the opportunity to have skin-to-skin -skin contact. Skin-to-skin -skin contact is an ideal way for your baby to adapt to his new life outside. It calms and relaxes both mother and baby, it stimulates digestion and helps them to start the feeding process. And this is the same whether they are breastfed or bottle fed. It will regulate the baby's heartbeat. It helps with their breathing and maintains their temperature, something that they have been doing automatically on the inside. Skin to skin can be done for mums, dads and siblings. However, for the first hour after delivery, we ensure that mum has skin to skin contact because this will help again to start the feeding process. During skin to skin contact, your baby will start to exhibit early feeding cues. The important thing is to watch what your baby is up to so you can decide how to proceed with a feed. Early feeding cues will be things like the baby touching its own mouth, rooting, nibbling, licking the breast. If you, at this stage you have decided you wish to bottle feed, then this would be the time to ask a midwife for some help. Otherwise, continue to leave the baby skin to skin and enjoy that first breastfeed. Other feeding cues that you should be looking for are the later signs that baby might be getting a little upset with the fact you haven't recognised those early cues. Things like crying is a last resort for a baby. They're upset, they want you to have listened. Take time, give your baby a lovely cuddle. If you can't calm your baby, pass your baby to somebody who can help with this and then take them back and enjoy a feed. So you've decided to breastfeed. The key important things here are position and attachment. There are a number of different positions that you can use, but there are things that you need to take into account when you use whichever one you decide. Is your baby's head and body in a straight line? This is really important. Are you holding your baby beautifully close? There's no point in having your baby out here if you want to feed, the baby has to be tucked in. Are you comfortable? Make sure you're comfy, your feet are grounded. Make sure you are in a good place to start this feed. And is your baby's nose opposite your nipple? Because if it isn't, this isn't gonna work. To help you with positioning and getting attachment correct, all of our staff have been trained to use the acronym CHINS. CHINS is something that you can very easily remember. The C stands for close to you, so always hold your baby, whichever position, close to you. The head needs to be free to tilt, always, so whether you are underarm or coming across, 
The hand should remain low and the head is able to tilt. The baby needs to be in line with your body. So across, coming up cradle, whichever way is comfortable for you, keep that baby straight. The nose needs to be opposite the nipple. That is very important to ensure that you get the big wide gate that is required for breastfeeding to be successful. And most importantly, be comfortable. If this baby goes on, you're going to be there a little while and it needs to be sustainable. Whilst you were pregnant, your midwife would have spoken to you about a close and loving relationship with your baby. Now that baby is with you, this is really important because it helps with their brain development. We teach responsive feeding. Responsive feeding for breastfeeding babies is about making sure that the baby breastfeeds whenever they want or whenever you want. So if you just want to have a sit down, if you want a cuddle, you can do this. You will not spoil your baby by acting responsively. For bottle fed babies, it is a little bit different. You still need to observe for the feeding cues. Your baby still needs to be held close and you can do skin to skin. Never force a baby to complete a bottle. This is a really bad practice as it can cause severe stomach aches in babies and they can become very upset. The important thing to remember is when your baby is born, it's the size of their tummy. This is the size of a newborn's tummy. It will hold somewhere around five to seven mils. So when you're giving more, all you're doing is stretching it. Sizes change as the days go by. And by that day 10, it can hold about 40 mils. A couple of important things to remember if you have chosen to bottle feed. The first thing is, that for the first two to two to three weeks, we would recommend it is just yourself and your partner who do most of the feeds. This is so that baby can get used to your technique and is happy with how things are. The other thing that is very important is the type of milk that you choose. It doesn't matter which brand you choose as they are all very similar. The important message is you should choose a first stage milk, not a hungrier baby, not a comfort, not a reflux a simple, easy, first stage milk. And this baby, this baby can stay on for the first year. Whether you are breast or bottle feeding, sometimes parents worry about whether their child is getting enough food, certainly with the breastfeeders. The important thing that you need to do is check your baby's nappy. The nappy will change from the early days right through till about six weeks. But for the first six weeks, at least, your baby should be passing at least two stools and at least five to six heavy wet nappies. For the first 24 to 48 hours, your baby will pass something called meconium. This is black and sticky. It's quite difficult to get off sometimes when you're cleaning them. Over the next few days, the poo will change. You will find it will go from the black through a changing green color to eventually a mustardy yellow, and this is whether they are breastfed or bottle fed. All babies for the first six weeks of life should do at least two dirty nappies every 24 hours. And by day five, those wet nappies should be at least five to six and quite heavy. If you aren't getting this, this is a sign that your baby may not be receiving enough food or potentially the bottle has been made up incorrectly. Please seek advice. Breastfeeding is something that is a learnt art between you and your baby. And for some women, this can be quite a concern. You will find initially the milk you produce is something called colostrum. It comes in very, very small amounts. As I said earlier, the baby's tummy is the size of a marble. So what you need to do is ensure that your baby has frequent access. The more access to the breast, the more milk will be made. For some women, there will be a delay in the milk coming in. This can be for many, many factors. Stress can play a big factor, as can the type of delivery you've had. Don't put yourself under any more strain than you need to. Ask for some extra support. But the key factors here are unlimited skin-to-skin -skin contact. Allow your baby to feed, graze, nibble. Switch feeding can work quite well. Switch feeding means 
allowing the baby to suckle on one side and as soon as they stop, offer the other side. Don't wait, don't time it, just offer. The other thing that can help if you are having trouble is hand expressing. And this is something we can go through with you at the time of delivery. However, it's a good idea to get in practice. If you have decided to try hand expressing, it's a technique that takes some time. Practice on your own. The important thing to remember is that the breast is not going to give milk straight away. It needs warming up. So you need to start with pitter pattering, maybe some massage, anything that makes you feel comfortable and relaxed, but also softens the breast up, especially around day three, when your breast will be very full. The important thing here is make a C shape, somewhere deep back on the breast, don't be close to the nipple. And then it is a very simple squeeze and release technique. You don't need to pull forward, you don't need to do anything other than squeeze that boob and release. And as you go, move your hands around like a clock face so that you are getting all of the ducts. During the antenatal period, your midwife may talk to you about colostrum harvesting. This is really important for any woman, but especially for those in high risk categories. So somebody with diabetes whose baby may need extra support after delivery. We would recommend that from 36 to 37 weeks, you commence hand expressing. You can ask your community midwife to provide you with a kit of syringes and that will come with instructions on what you need to do. It is a simple technique and you will gather the colostrum, keep it at home in your freezer and bring it in with you when you come back to the hospital to have your baby. Some postnatal experiences for mum. As I mentioned earlier, your blood loss can carry on for up to six weeks. It may not, but it can do. Any time after four weeks, your period can also come back as well. If you do have any stitches, the best hygiene recommendations are to use plain water and to keep it clean and dry and change your pads regularly. You can use oral analgesia to keep yourself comfortable. You may notice swelling in your legs and your feet. This can be relieved by elevating your legs and drinking plenty of water. If you have a caesarean section, we recommend to use big knickers so they do not rub on the scar line. Keeping your scar clean and dry and making sure again you have good analgesia. Before you get discharged, your baby will need to have a full neonatal physical examination. This can be performed by either a qualified midwife or a paediatrician. Keep a hat on the baby for the first 24 hours or when going outside if it's in cold weather. Leave their cord folded outside of the nappy for it to dry. Use plain water and cotton wool for the first four weeks to reduce any skin irritation. Your baby may start to have yellow skin or eyes. This is physiological jaundice. Natural daylight and frequent feeds may help to improve this. If you have any concerns at all, please call your community midwife or your local hospital. Once you're home, your community midwife will come and visit you. She will give you your newborn blood spot screening appointment for the baby to have a test and to be weighed. She will look after you up until roughly day 10. At this point, your health visitor will call you and arrange a home visit and will look after you up until baby's five years old. You've got up to six weeks to register the baby's birth and at six to eight weeks, we recommend you have a GP appointment for a routine check. At this appointment, your GP will discuss contraception methods with you as this is extremely important right now. There are several things you can do to reduce the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Checking the baby's temperature, always touch their chest. If you're using their hands, face or feet, they will always be colder. So it's always advising to check their chest first. We do recommend to avoid smoking around the baby or if someone does smoke, to make sure they wash their hands, take their coat off 
and to try not to hold baby for at least half an hour. We do not recommend to put any toys in the cot or Moses basket as these may fall and suffocate the baby. We recommend to put the baby's feet at the bottom of the cot so they can only wriggle above their blankets rather than below. We advise no sleeping on the sofa with baby as this can also cause suffocation. Sleeping positions, we recommend the baby goes on their back. Do not put them on their side or on their front. We advise when babies are asleep that they should be in the same room with you for at least six months. Please see the link below for more details. If you haven't done so already, please access our Maternity Direct service, where you can find lots of evidence-based information and health advice. You can also chat to a midwife for non-urgent questions and queries. The link is below.